on one. High fly ball. Deep right field. Backing up Eaton, and that one is out of here. No sack. He crushed it. And the Red Sox have taken the lead. Ooh. Bitch, put some respect on my name. Hey. When you speak on me, you speak on the game. Ladies and gentlemen, this is episode two of Smack Talk. I am your host, Johnny B. And today, we have a special guest. He is uh, not only a longtime friend, he is also a business owner, entrepreneur, marketing genius, and a rapper. Ladies and gentlemen, Najee, a.k.a. French Toast. Thank you, thank you. Thank I you, guess. man. I had to give you that intro, bro. You, you, I think you, uh, you, you deserve it. You I, deserve that intro. You really do. Okay. I really appreciate it. So, let's get into it, man. Um, the first thing on the list is the rap career. I want to know more about the rap career. So, let's say a young person, okay, male or female, mm -hmm. want to become a rapper in 2023. And it's not just, you know, doing a freestyle and posting it on SoundCloud or, or, or YouTube or Spotify. There's more, there's a process that goes behind it. You know, and that's why I want to talk to you about it. Okay, so please explain to us what it's like being a rapper in 2023. So being a rapper in 2023 is special. So you don't need a record label anymore to do any of this. Mm -hmm. um, one word that could like sum it all up is TikTok. If <laughs> no, but honestly, it is a TikTok it's, generation, man. It's a hundred percent a TikTok generation. Absolutely. Um, so. Like, I would say if you want to be, a, like, a rapper or any type of musician nowadays, the content itself does matter to a certain point. Like, you have to reach, like, a certain bar of quality. But then after that, all it is is marketing. Yeah. It's it's 100% how you market yourself, how you advertise, how you look. By the way, he said I'm a rapper or whatever. Like, I'm not, I'm not close. Like, I, I did it for fun for a while. I really did try for a little bit. And, um... I so basically how I got into it was um, I, I listened to this uh, rapper called Baby No Money and he made a song called La 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 yeah. and it was like worldwide and uh, this guy ended up being the um, the cousin of the girlfriend of my big brother in yeah. Vancouver so like you know not not close at all but like <laughs> anyways he had a he had a wedding in Montreal okay. for his sister all right and then I was invited to that wedding okay and then I had a chance to talk to him and just like chill out hang out with him. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he was like, yeah, man, my, my, my plan is like to be a, a, a kinesiologist. Okay. Like that's what I'm in school for right yeah, now. Yeah. And I just enjoyed rapping for fun. And he does like mumble rap and all this stuff. It's like nothing serious. Zero. There's like no meaning behind the raps. So this guy is a Nas. Huh? He's not Nas. Like he's not Tupac. He's no, not a, no, he's not no, a lyrical no, no. genius. Well, no, he's, he's fun. Exactly. He's just fun. He's okay. being himself and stuff. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So... You said marketing. Like, how important how important it is uh, is it to a um, to a rapper to to market their product? Because you know, if you just uh, base your I don't know your fame off of um, the product you put out, you know, it can, it can be good to a certain point, but marketing is going to bring it to another level. You know what I mean? So, explain like how you know how would you what would you do like in terms of marketing wise if you would want to be uh, you know famous? You know. Well, the first word, TikTok. TikTok is like 100% where you would go to do it. Um, it depends on what social platforms you have. If you have a big social platform on Instagram, use your Instagram. If you have a big social platform on Twitter, use Twitter. Reddit, use Reddit. It doesn't really matter, but you have to get a presence on there. You have to get people behind your music. And then Spotify, the way it works is that, let's say you're in a pool. Let's say you start off, you post your first song on Spotify. And then after like 100 people listen to it, mm -hmm. 10 people like it. They're like, oh, okay, so 10% like it. They'll put it in a bigger pool. 1,000 people. We'll show it to 1,000 people. But if you already have, let's say, 40,000 followers on Instagram, and you post your song on the Instagram story, and you tell them, oh, go listen to my song, and then you post your music on, on Spotify, and then right away, you got 20,000 views, well, then your pool is not going to be 100 people shown. Your next song that you put out, it's going to be minimum, you know, like, uh, 5,000 people, 10,000 people, whatever. And then it becomes like a snowball effect, right? Does talent matter? No. 
I really don't think so. I really, I really hey, I like don't your think so. I like your honesty. I really don't honesty. think so, yeah. I think that you can be the most talented rapper ever. You could have the craziest lyrics. You could be like, you could be completely unknown. Nobody will ever care about you. Nobody will ever like take a second look at you and be like, oh yeah. So it's just, if you market it's yourself just, bad, that's yeah. it. It's just glorified clickbait in a certain yeah. sense. Yeah, it is. Jeez. It's 100% that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the like all the talent like from the '90s and you know early 2000s like the rappers nowadays. Yeah, okay, some of them have talent there. I'm not gonna start dissing everybody there, but you know, it's less like for let, let's say me. Okay, I grew up uh, listening to me uh, to to hip hop and stuff, and I fell in love with the lyrics. I fell in love with what they can do with like different contexts and the flow and stuff. I loved it, you know. And when mumble rap came into the scene, you know, um, the quality of uh, you know lyrical content yeah. content uh went down a lot okay yeah, and sure. it's pretty it's pretty sad to see to be honest because mm -hmm. you know what i'm listening to country right now dude okay listen to country I, oh yeah because I, right. I i like the lyrics okay don't judge me all right dude all right okay okay i love country i'm gonna okay? just leave <laughs> <laughs> what do you listen to i listen to, to rap like I re actually you know recently i've been listening to um <laughs> I've been listening to Russian rap, uh, really? Ukrainian rap, Russian rap, anywhere, anywhere in that area. Please don't come after me. It's okay. But like anywhere in that area, like uh, I just, I don't know. It sounds so, it sounds so, like I listen to it in my car and I feel like a complete gangster. I feel like I'm from the mafia. I feel so great. I'm like pumped up. I'm like, yeah, that's right. What are you going to do? Who's going to come up to me? Exactly. Yeah. I'm you listening hear, to you, Russian rap. Exactly. You, know? you hear Russian rap in the background, dude. Yeah. You, you, you know, you they're think like, twice. You're like, you know what? Maybe I won't talk to this guy today. <laughs> <laughs> what also I want to talk to you about, man, is, uh, well, we've known each other for so long, man. And we worked together for about like f four years, four years, I guess. And five. 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 Yeah. Yeah. We've yeah. been through uh, a lot of uh, crazy situations. Uh, for people who don't know, I used to be a bouncer. Okay. Well, and you still are sometimes okay yeah and uh you know we uh we have some pretty messed up situations and uh usually uh those situations uh end in violence or uh end in some crazy stories so with that <laughs> do you remember the craziest story that ever happened at the casino the craziest story mm -hmm. <clears throat> i don't know man there's so many stories that's the thing yeah uh the craziest story i'm not a hundred percent sure I do remember, like, I'll, I'll name one from the, like, the top of my head. Um, there was this one guy. Uh, he was like playing on the table with a couple of other guys beside him. And then after that, he like left his seat for two seconds. Okay. This guy is about middle-aged, 40-year-old uh, white dude. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, really? So surprising. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, anyways, middle-aged, about 40-year-old white dude. Yeah. He's just like, you know, he's playing on the table, whatever. He gets up for like two seconds. Mm -hmm. And then a younger gentleman, he's uh, black, and he goes to sit down in that seat. White dude does not take it. No, 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 no. He got pissed. He was like, that is my seat. Am I allowed to swear? Of course. That is my fucking seat. Yeah, you know, that's dude. what you're saying. He's yeah. like, that is my fucking seat. <laughs> and then <laughs> black guy gets up. He's like, yo, what the hell? Like, he just, he's like, I'm, I'm, I didn't know it was your fucking seat. Like, whatever. He goes to leave, and the white guy follows him. And he's like, he's like, he's like, he's just like going crazy after him, running after him inside this, uh, the place. And then after that, what, um, the, the black dude comes up to me, he's like, yo, I, like, I need help. Somebody like, help me out. Like security, security. And then, uh, I see like, yo, what's going on? And then this white guy goes and swings, swings at him for no reason, swings at him, misses while he's swinging. I grab him by the arm and I throw him on the ground while the guy's falling on the ground, the black dude uppercuts him oh my god right in the face oh my god so and then and the ground was all um it was like marble okay it was marble oh my ground. god dude there was no carpet there was nothing it was marble ground yeah yeah so i go while he's swinging in his like in his swing grab him throw him on the ground black dude uppercuts him right in the nose while he's falling so pow and then he hits face first my god no hand into the into the marble ground so it was like a puddle of blood and yeah i just want to say like that that guy calmed down right away but he like, was calm he was yeah i quiet. guess so i guess so yeah i didn't want to didn't want to be mean to anyone you know he's like okay cooler than a All penguin right. bro yeah. yeah 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 oh my god yeah it's crazy how people as soon as they get drunk they love to just try you know what i mean like and we're wait and people don't understand like you know we're young uh, we were young adults at the time and we're, we're waiting for this the whole night dude 
Yeah, we're pumped. We like we yeah. go to work out. We say, work like, out. I hope but, yeah. someone tries. Yes, yeah, please, yeah. God, let someone try me tonight. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. I worked out. You know, I did some yeah. bench press, and I want to test yeah. it out. You know, I just pushed three hundred pounds. <laughs> I'm gonna do it again tonight. <laughs> and then just going crazy. <laughs> That's yeah. what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey man, remember when we um, we body slammed a dude and he shit himself? Were you on that situation? Oh, the the, the guy? Yes, the guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're not yeah, going to mention his that. name, but uh, he also was a 50-year-old Caucasian male. Okay. <laughs> I don't know surprise, what it is. Surprise, okay. Um, uh, d- uh, disgustingly drunk, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. G- like, uh, he, was, he wasn't, it was a dress code thing. Yeah. Dress code thing. So we had, like, flip-flops on, okay? Yeah. And we were working <laughs> in a club, and it's a, it's a high-end club, all right? Like, we don't let, like, anybody come in, right? And this guy's wearing flip-flops. And not just any flip-flops, the hotel room flip-flops, okay? With the logo on it and everything. Like, yeah. dude, yeah, come on, man. Wear something different, you know? And, well, we refused him. He was drunk uh, on some uh, illegal substances as well. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, uh, well, he decided to swing at uh, me and uh, Nash. Um, well, it didn't turn out very good for him, okay? Because, uh, you know, at the time we were probably, well, I was like 270 and you were probably the same thing, I yeah, guess. Like 260, so, yeah, like yeah. That's a lot of weight, man. And I guess uh, <laughs> this guy uh, was on a liquid diet the whole night because um, everything came out. Yeah. Everything came out. When I'm yeah. telling you that, I, we put all of our weight, okay, on this guy's stomach, all right? Yeah, I can um, still smell it, man. I can still smell yeah. it, too. All right. Uh, maybe he went to a buffet before. Uh, maybe he went to McDonald's because uh, the, uh, the smell is unforgettable. unforgettable. Yeah, unforgettable. Like for Dude. sure. And then we had to drag drag him okay out of uh, the club, handcuffed and full of shit. So we had to evacuate the club because you know people were walking over feces. You know. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, that's uh, you know that's a typical day in a day in the life of a, of a bouncer, uh, that and like heart attacks and stuff, dude. Like I had to like pump like I, I pumped like three people. It's the craziest situation I ever, bro. Luckily, never pumped anyone. Like that, three people, man. Three that, people. Like leave me alone, one, man. I just want to chill. Leave on my me phone. alone. The guy's dying. Fuck I mean, you, well, buddy. well, well, <laughs> you know. I'm there. <laughs> I'm there to work first. Uh, for, first of all, but you know, of course, like as soon as it happens and you hear it like on the radio. Mm-hmm. Dude, like the, the the rush of adrenaline is was just insane. Oh yeah, like oh, we yeah. had to we had to grab the defibrillator, de- defibrillator geez Louise, uh, you know, find the person and then you know start pumping. And I was pumping this guy for nine minutes. Me and Day, Day, if you're watching, I. Um, so you're pumping this guy for nine minutes. Yeah. Non-stop pumping. Man, huh? I was sweating. This poor dude, okay? I was pour- pouring sweat on this guy, okay? You have no idea how bad this sounds. Oh, my God. I know, but, like, I was pumping, okay? I was pumping this guy for nine minutes, <laughs> pouring pause, sweat pause, on him. Pause, bro. <laughs> <laughs> poor dude. Poor dude. I just kept pumping nonstop. Shout out to Dave. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, well, um... <laughs> yeah, 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 no, you're continue. Right. You were pumping. I, yeah. was, I was sweating profusely yeah, on yeah, this yeah. man's face, okay? Yep. Yeah, damn, it's getting nice worse. Visual, it's yeah. getting worse, guys. It's getting worse. Uh, anyway, this guy survived, okay? Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. you know, so the sweat, the sweat helped, okay? My pumping helped. Your right? pumping did help, yeah. So, you know, Johnny's pumps save lives. <laughs> So just so you guys know that, remember that. Man. Remember the guy when he uh, he lost his phone off the balcony? Oh, this guy. Yeah, I remember that. I was first one on that. That we was had to like something. pull his face off of the gravel. <laughs> oh my god, what an idiot! Okay, so oh, such a such an idiot. This guy, he he's talking to two girls. He's obviously un- intoxicated, and he's like uh, he dropped his phone off a balcony. The balcony is how how far is it from the ground? Ooh. It's like what twenty feet? Twenty feet. Twenty I'd feet say. from the ground. Okay? Absolutely. And on the bottom, it's not grass. It's gravel and rocks and cigarette butts and cigarette butts. Cigarette butts, gravel, and rocks. like the perfect combination. A tobacco yeah. and just cement. You know exactly. Um, and he he drops his phone. So then the girl's like, "Oh, damn, you dropped your phone." And he's like, "Yeah, but." <laughs> Would you kiss me if I went to get it? And she's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and the dude fucking jumps. He jumps off the balcony. He landed knee first. Yeah. Knee and, first, dude. And then me and uh, my friend uh, Max, 
Max was there. Yeah, we were the first two on that situation. We're running, sprinting. Somebody jumped off the balcony. We run, sprint. We get there. Guy is like, like just, just flat. You know, he's yeah. like, no movement, nothing. And we're like, holy shit, we're waiting for, we're waiting for paramedics. We're calling everybody. We're like, are you okay? Guy wakes up, immediately pushes himself up, and I'm like, no, no, don't move. We, we haven't. You're you fucking broken something in your yeah. neck. You, you have no be idea. Paralyzed, dude. Yeah. You can be paralyzed, totally. Yeah. So like, don't move, don't move. He's like, yeah, fuck you. And he's try, he tries to get up. And then uh, paramedics come, whatever. And uh, I don't know if he left with them or if he ended up I think up he did. He was in the ambulance, yeah. Yeah, I think he had to. Like, yeah, well, dude, if you insane. have gravel and cigarette butts and, like, you know, encrusted, indented, yeah, yeah. encrusted in your face, I think yeah. it's time to go to the hospital, man, you know? Yeah. You know? And he never, he never got that kiss. So He never did. No, never got that kiss. Poor man. Poor man. Yeah. He probably got kissed again. Well, probably not, honestly. This guy was an idiot. Doesn't uh, deserve a kiss. That's No, that's like, you no. know, the ultimate simp, you know? Yeah, absolutely. That was that guy. <laughs> I, will, I will jump off I will cliff. swan dive uh, off this balcony. Into cement. <laughs> into cement for your kiss. Okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not oh. even, like, nothing special, you know? Yeah. Oh, oh my know. God, man. That's crazy. So, like, w what I wanted to uh, talk about, too, is, like, your first day on the job, okay? Your first day on the job, there's something messed up that happened. Please talk about that. So my first day on the job, if I remember correctly, okay? Um, so I came, so let's say this, okay, so this place that I'm working at currently, it's very um, white gloved. So, you know, we try to be respectful. Even when we kick out people, we try to be respectful. We try to take it, like, we try to do it verbally as much as possible. It's very hard for us to take it physically yes, right away. You know? Everything is filmed, man. There's like yeah, 5,000 cameras. Yeah, yeah, Everything yeah. So, is filmed. So we, we really try our best to make it as professional as possible. Uh, we really respect the person as much as possible. We, yeah, uh, yeah. we Well, you know, we would try our best. Yeah, like, we try our best. You know, yeah. it's hard to deal with people. Very. It's it's literally like a playground. It's like... Yeah. Um, adult playground. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, it, yeah, yeah. Basically, it's a yeah. playground for adults. Anyways, so what happened on my first day, is I come from a club background. So you you just, you know, you, you do one thing wrong, and the guy's like, just, oh, shit, my bad, my bad, my bad. Sorry yeah, about don't that. break shit, And man, the guy just, like, takes him by the neck, you know, and then you just yeah. drag him out by the neck. So I come from a club background, yeah. and then I was like, okay, you know. And the first thing I'm told, I'm like, hey, this isn't a club, okay? So you can't, you can't start taking people out. <laughs> You can't start putting you know, people in a you, fucking you, full Nelson. No, no chokeholds. Zero. We're, yeah, yeah. Anti you do one chokehold, you're out, basically. Yeah, I know. Unless it's like extremely, thing. like, <laughs> you know, the guy's like just swinging knives everywhere. Then you can choke him out, but that's about it. Um, so, yeah, I was told that. And then on my first day, first, first day, this kid, he's not that big. He's my height, but you know, I make like I make two of him, right? He's drunk, and I'm telling him, you know, you have to leave. Sorry, you have to leave. And then he's like, oh, yeah? What are you going to do about it? And he pushes me. And then in my head, all I could think about is like, oh, Don't wait. Don't touch him. I can't touch him. Mm. You know? So I'm just like, no, nah, you got to leave. You just got to leave. Then he pushes me a second time. I'm like, what the f am I allowed to do anything? I have no idea if I'm allowed to do anything. I didn't mm -hmm. want to lose my job. I mm -hmm. just got it. And he pushes me a third time. And then the guy who was training me just came. And he uh, picked him up by his legs and, like, body slammed him on the ground. And I was like, oh, we can do something. We're actually allowed to do stuff. That's kind of cool. <laughs> the same guy who opened a door with a guy's head. We're not going to say yeah, his name, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I love you to death, man. Yeah. You know who you are. Yeah. You're a great person. But, oh, my uh -huh. God, you were uh, you had some crazy situations, man. Well, anyway, but while he body slammed him, like, because of my situation, you know, he pushed, pushed, pushed. Yeah. And I didn't do anything. You know, just go, please, please, please leave, you know. And uh, he body slammed him. And when he body slammed him, he actually broke, like, uh, something in his back. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, not, the, not the client. Like, my, my friend. The guy okay. who body slammed. Yeah. Really? He, yeah, yeah. He was out of work for, like, three months after that. Wow. So, the, my first day on the job, he was done. He basically broke his back. Yeah. Uh, it's what? called Aunt Dulce. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I don't know what the, in English. Uh well, similar to like a hernia, I guess, or just like a pulled muscle, maybe. Oh, hernia, yeah, 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 hernia. Okay. Like a yeah. disc, a disc mm -hmm. was moved. Okay. So Jeez. something very severe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, um, I also remember it, that same night. Yeah. So he body slams him on the ground, and then um, one of our bosses comes, <laughs> and for one mi like from one moment, uh, I was like, oh shit, this it's like a mafia place, you know. I was just like, I was like, this is this is crazy stuff. He comes, he bends over, and he starts rubbing the guy's head. And he says, 
oh yeah, you're gonna be quiet now, huh? You're gonna be quiet. <laughs> and then I was like, oh my god, and you're gonna I, sleep with the fishes. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, so man. It's fun. crazy. Like we, when you think about it, like we've touched and handled and 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 you know been in the same place with a lot of money, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, it was wild to see. It was really Mm -hmm. crazy. Like, when you, like, you know, thought about it for a second, like, okay, I just, I had about, like, you know, $400,000 in my hands, you know? Yeah, just walking around. Just walking walking around around pretty easily. Yeah, it's... it's There's this one guy, like, he's, he spends about, I don't know, what was it, like, 20 to 30K a night, and he just, he has $100 bills, and he just puts it in one machine. He has his own machine. Oh, no, it's 100,000 a night. Excuse me? Minimum 100000 a night. What? He spends minimum 100000 a night. Between, um, in a three months' time span, he spends between seven to ten million. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. But that's his life, right? Like, he doesn't really like work anymore. Like, he's a business owner, I guess. I'm what, not gonna... what is he going to do? What do you mean work? He can spend $10 million in three months. Like, you, you know? I know, but like, still, at a certain point, man, like, you know, even, let's say I, like, I was a multimillionaire, I'd still, I would still want to work in some way. You know, you have to be, you have to keep, Probably. You, can't, you can't just chill on the beach for the rest of it. It's not, Probably that's not, manages stuff, you know? Yeah. Hey, I don't see him manages, doing like hard yeah, oh, yeah. Either, he yeah. manages money pretty good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, what an investment. The best investment in the world. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. The that, guy owns like part of Fiji. Really? Like the island. Yeah. What? Is it an island? Is there an island yeah, called yeah, Fiji? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he owns it. Yeah. He How owns, does he own Fiji? He bought it. I don't know. Are like, you sure it's Fiji? I'm I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty Fiji's some, like it's some, like a country, dude. I think maybe Fiji water then. <laughs> like I don't know. I, but like something of a Fiji. I remember that. Like he owns part of it. He owns many many government buildings. <laughs> yeah. Like so the government actually pays his rent. Like you know like they lease the building from him and they're paying monthly rent to him, which is uh, very impressive. You know. <laughs> yeah. So how is it being a business owner right now, man? How does that feel? Business, man, man, since COVID, it's pretty shitty, but it's not, uh, it's still good. It's very fun. It's nice to be like your own boss. It's um, nice to know that the effort you put in, like, comes out, you know, it comes out through your business, right? So I started doing, I, by the way, like, just me personally, I try everything. Like, I try everything i thought i was bad this this guy's crazy yeah like i'll i'll like rap you know i was not in the sphere of trying rap but then i heard i'm like oh this guy did it in his basement i can do it and then i just started doing it you know and I, I don't care if people like judge or what i was judged so much i'm still judged about it and it doesn't matter it's nah, just like who cares if they're listening like, they're who, listening man who cares it's just a fun thing you know mm-hmm um, yeah, so what I ended up doing is, um, me and my wife, we, uh, she has a beauty salon mm-hmm. and, uh, when we got married and everything, we ended up, I ended up like going with her and we mm-hmm. made it bigger and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And we like arranged some stuff together, but, uh, I ended up taking a course to do, uh, scalp micropigmentation. It's okay. like a tattoo on the head. Okay. And honestly, I love it. It's like a really fun thing when you go, we, we, like, when a client comes to you and whatever, like, you know, he's, he's a sh- shy person it's like something personal to him like hey this has been affecting my confidence and i can actually help with that which is so cool you mm-hmm. know it could be a girl a guy or whatever it doesn't matter but it's it's nice to be able to help with something and it's like a good let's say five five hours of just me like you know doing tattoo and we're just chatting and he's telling me all of his personal stuff and i don't i didn't have like a sphere of work where i have this type of like connection with people mm-hmm. And it's really fun. It's really fun. And then it's so rewarding to see, like, they're like, oh, my God, you know, it's the first time I ever stepped into a bar in 20 years without Whoa. wearing a hat, you know? Wow, dude. And, like, you know, my heart just, like, I'm like, fuck. Like, I'm so happy that Whoa. I could do that. Um, dude, man, having, like, for men, you know, the, the hairline and stuff, like, people laugh about it. And, yeah, of course, it's funny at some, some point, you know, some degree. Yeah. But uh, it, it affects you a lot, man. If you're not comfortable in your skin, dude, like, uh, life... Uh, it's hard, man. I I understand it because I I went through it a lot and I, I still do sometimes. Uh, it's hard. It's hard, especially for men, man, because you know, like we get laughed at a lot, you know, if we talk about that or whatever. Yeah. But uh, man, you're just changing people's lives when you, you don't really think about it. You know, you think it's it's such a it's such a small thing, but it's a it's a huge thing in that person's life, man. Yeah, that's the, like that. It's true, and it's it's nice. It's nice to be able to do that. Uh, 
I just, I don't know, man. It's, it, it feels great. It really feels great. Um, I opened a couple other businesses too at the same time. But uh, let's say one, one other one. I started renting cars. Mm-hmm. So I had... Um, on Turo? Yeah, on Turo. Shout out Turo. Yeah, shout out Turo. Um, it's not like... It's 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 an okay... It's a good platform, you know, like they, they have your okay. back and well, stuff. Well, maybe but you not have, shout out Turo then. Well, no, it's a good platform. Okay. It is a good platform. <laughs> they do... Um, they have your back when you... But you have to follow the rules, like 100%. You have to 100% follow the rules. Mm-hmm. And he's the world's best pilot. You have yeah. to follow the rules 100%. And if you do, then they have your back, like 100%. And the customer service is um What do really you mean good. follow the rules? So let's say like you have to do a certain set of things. You have to take pictures before, you take pictures after. There's a time frame between you have to take the pictures. Okay. You have to write down the mileage, the uh, the gas. Is like, it a good side hustle though? Yeah, it's a nice side hustle. It depends. Like if you own the car already, then yeah, you can make a couple. You can make a couple hundred, maybe a thousand, two thousand a month. You know. Yeah. Just by renting your car out. So you know? what are the cars that you have, sir? <laughs> I have a, a couple cars. Um, I have uh, two 2018 Camrys. Ooh. Yeah, one. They're sexy though. They're very sexy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love them. One XSE. It's black with a red leather interior. Oh yeah. And the other one is an SE upgraded. It's gray black interior. Yeah. I have a Corolla Toyota Corolla 2014, silver with silver interior, and I have, <laughs> I got, um, I got three Teslas. There's drop a, the mic. Yeah, drop the mic. <laughs> yep. I got three Teslas. I got fucked by Tesla recently, but. I got three Teslas. I got um, uh, a twenty twenty. You, no, no, whoa, whoa, whoa! You can't just you can't just say that and not elaborate on it, dude. I, I'll elaborate in like two seconds. <laughs> yeah, don't worry about perfect, it. Perfect, perfect. I love it. Um, I got a twenty twenty one Tesla Model Three, a twenty twenty two Tesla Model Three, and a twenty twenty three Tesla Model Three. And I also have a Model Y Performance twenty twenty two. Is that the one we were in today? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, it's fast. It's, oh yeah. It's fun. All white interior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Gorgeous. White on white, you know. Oh man. Um, it's like driving in a polar bear, baby. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. The new, uh, the new Lebanese thing, you know. <laughs> <laughs> they got their white BMWs. I just upgraded, baby. A white Tesla, white interior, everything white. <laughs> everything must be white, you know. Everything must be white, and you know you have to wear the drakkar noir. Drakkar noir, noir is very important. Who told you? How do you know? I know. I have, you know I have inside <laughs> connection about Lebanese people, you yeah, know? Yeah. All my brothers are Lebanese. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, speaking about Lebanese, man, like, uh, your wife is Ukrainian. For people who don't know, uh, your wife is uh, U- Ukrainian. Yeah. What's the, like, tell me, like, what's the difference in culture between, like, uh, Lebanese culture and Ukrainian? It must be wild. This is actually the most amazing thing that I found out, you know, with being with my wife. We are so similar. Really? Worlds apart, yet so similar. So similar. It's insane. Wow. So similar. We have the same beliefs. We have the same, like, mentality when it comes to... The same mentality when it comes to family. Uh, They're very business-oriented. They're very hustler. Like, hustlers, just in general. At least my wife is, you know. Uh, Always thinking about how to make more money, how to do this, how to do that. They're amazing cooks. Like just a um, the food is so oh good. My God, dude. The food is so good. Wow. I have like three course meals every day. You know, she she's just amazing. You know, like everything is like it's clean. Everything is uh, you know just I'm taken care of. I'm taken care of a hundred percent. Wow. I feel great. I feel like a man. She makes me feel like a man. And, Which is um, important, man. Yeah, it's yeah, very it's important. important. And you know, and I do my things on my side, and she appreciates it. And everything. And she's a hustler too, man. She oh, works too. Oh, big time hustler, big time hustler. My wife was like, when we met, like, she wasn't broke. You know, it wasn't like uh, I I came in and I swooped and I saved her. No, no, no. She was like, she's good. You just joined the party, man. Yeah, I joined the party, yeah, and yeah. we we ended up like clicking together, and we started building bigger mm-hmm. together. But she was, she's great. She's a. She's just like an amazing person, you know. Wow. She she hustles so much. She made her business by herself, uh, without money. She came in uh, from Ukraine by herself. She came from like a rich family. They mm-hmm. ended up losing a little bit, okay. and then she had to build up her entire name by herself. And then she did like she's just a great hustled, job. Hustled, she hustled, did a great hustled. job, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Is uh, uh, did she have family still in uh, Ukraine? She had her mom. Okay. But uh, we. I'm very happy to say that she's in Canada now, awesome. so wow. she's safe. And um, there was, uh, luckily, we brought her in right before uh, they cut off. Like they ended up bombing like um, the um, major facilities. Okay. Like so, let's say electricity, water, this and that. Mm-hmm. So a week after she came, there was no more Wi-Fi. There was no more water. 
there was no more hot water. There's no more like, you know, there's um, no connection to the outside world, basically. So it was nice because imagine, you know, us waiting for her to arrive and we can't talk to her. We can't see her. We have no idea what's going on. And she, like she has nothing, you know, she has nothing. Yeah. So it's it's nice. We were lucky that she came when she came. Damn. Damn. It's, those, it, it's those type of situations. In those type of situations, you really feel lucky, man. You really feel lucky. Like you, you have no control of where you where you're born, you know. And uh, some places are just really rough. Mm -hmm. Damn. Yeah. Well, at least she's here, man. She's living a good life now. Living a very good life. Yeah, good life. Man. Canada is Canada is great for like stability and everything. Yeah. Like uh, fruits and vegetables, though. My God, no. <laughs> you know, <laughs> she's talking to me about these uh, tomatoes. Oh my God, the tomatoes. The tomato scandal. The cucumbers. It's it's insane. She's saying like. In Ukraine, these tomatoes, you know, they get full of sugar and everything. They just, like, crack in half how much sugar was inside them. You can smell Like You pass yeah. in front of a tomato, you can smell it. Now the only time it cracks in half is when it's, uh, you know, rotten. Yeah, here, yes. Yeah. It's like they can't. They're like the judgment towards tomatoes from Ukrainians in Canada is it's a thing. Like they can there's make, a tomato crisis. There's a tomato crisis in really? Canada, for sure. Yeah, there's no flavor in these tomatoes. Public yeah. service announcement, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go get some tomatoes, but not from here, though. Not from here, no. No. Hey, coming back to the Tesla, there's one thing I wanted to talk to you about. Dude, yeah. how did it feel gifting your father a car? Oh, man, that's, that's like the best thing. The best feeling ever. I, this, is actually my, this is actually my second time doing it. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Damn, flex on him, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flex so, on him. It was, um, it's, it's very nice. It's a super nice feeling. Um, we started off, so I don't, I don't come from like anything like huge, you know, just like a really normal family. Like I don't, I didn't have anything. Like I had, I had all the bases, all the bases were covered, you know, I had food, I had a place to sleep. I was loved, so much love. Um, you know, I never felt poor. I never felt broke, but I, I never had like a handout. I never had any like crazy contacts. I never had anything. So I ended up investing in like the stock market and I made a little money and then I was, um, I don't know, I just, I just love my family so much. So I ended up getting my dad a Camry, the, the 2018 Camry. Mm -hmm. And um, he, his face was, I filmed it. It was, it was something, man, he, like, uh, like tears and stuff and like just so much emotion. Wow. Uh, before that we had, um, my dad was like driving a beat down car. It was like a 20... 20, uh, 2010 Camry, and then uh, he had a 2000 Corolla or something like that. Okay. I don't know. It's not, it, was, it wasn't like, it's not crazy bad, but it's not like, it wasn't something like, you know, you weren't really happy about it. You were just like, okay, I got a car, you know, I can drive around. Damn. So, it felt wow. great. That and must that, feel so good, man, just, you know, yeah. giving him that, that, that gift, like a gift that he'll never expect. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, coming from a family that, you know, not doesn't necessarily it's not struggling at all but it's just that there's not really you know very much luxuries yeah. luxury you know yeah, and yeah. it feels good it feels good giving back to to your parents man because they've been through a lot you know so yeah my parents both lebanese right absolutely both, both immigrants both um you know they they lived through a war as well mm -hmm. in lebanon and everything i never had to experience that because you know we had a good man yeah they chose they chose to come to live in canada they chose you know probably they get, there's a family here for sure but like they gave up a lot of family over there and mm -hmm. they they decided you know want to build a family make it you know and they gave me a really good life me and my little brother my big brother my big sister you know really really good life and they sacrificed a lot for sure like i they didn't never showed it never showed it but they did so yeah start off the 2018 camry and then after that recently i think this year yeah this year i gave him a 20 2023 Tesla, a blue oh, yeah. with white interior. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So that of felt course. great. That felt great. He's like, now like I see him like you know confidence is like popping. My dad wearing leather jackets, you okay. know, driving the Tesla, okay. and then all of his friends are like, hey, you got a Tesla? He's like, yeah, my son got it for me. Ooh. And they're like, oh, sh like my son didn't even get me like a fucking birthday <laughs> card this year, you know? So he's he's feeling great. He's like just bragging all the time. It's nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Just flexing on his friends. Mm -hmm. Man. Oh, that's awesome. When you're yeah. when you're when your parent can can talk shit yeah, to yeah. their friends about you, yeah. it's the best feeling, it's man. Really good, yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Hey man. You know, the thing is, like, you know, I'm gonna get back to the to the Ukrainian and Lebanese thing. Um mm -hmm. in their culture, I don't think people understand uh 
the differences. Okay, I, I just want you. Can you go? Can you go through like what is like the major culture shock that you had uh, in a Ukrainian uh, household? There was, there's no shock. There was no shock. We were so similar. That's the craziest thing is really? that we were so similar, so extremely similar. Um, the way like our morals are the same. Let's say you know like, let's say certain things that you learn from like how to talk to people let's say like like you know you're talking to a person you won't burp you know you won't be like rude you won't there's like things that we describe as rude in our culture and they have the same things on their culture too um one of the things that i would say was a shock i don't know man i love the accent i love the english like the accent of yeah. like uh yeah person speaking english and they're from like either russia or ukraine or something like that you know that i felt the first time I went on a date with um, my wife, my current wife, um, man, I felt like James Bond. I felt I felt so cool. I was like, she's just talking to me. I'm like, oh my god, I got this. That's stressed. a Russian spy. That's yeah, a Russian spy right now. I, <laughs> I feel so fucking cool right now, just walking beside her, you know. Yeah. And uh, now I'm like 100 percent used to it. Like I don't even hear it. But man, not, no, no crazy cultural shocks. I'm sure it, it would be cultural shocks to some people, but. I can't like think of anything on top hmm. of my head to be honest. But it's cool that you say that it's uh, it's very similar, because uh, I have a lot of uh, Lebanese friends and like they're well you know compared to you know Canadian culture there's there's a lot of differences. But with the Canadian culture, we can see a lot of different um, a different households, a different uh, uh, people from different countries, different religions, um, how they you know view the world that's what i find so interesting too man i love talking to people with different beliefs and different point of views and i think it's so important for you know for us as uh, individuals to, to 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 expand our mind to other views because there's there's so much there's so much pressure and and you know and, and negativity from from you know from mainstream ideologies that it doesn't really let, give us enough time or a lot of time to to connect man and 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 the point you know the point of living is to is is to love each other like honestly man like we're all in this shit together man mm -hmm. like you know like w I don't know. To, to me, like, there's so much hatred, man, and, and we need stuff like this, like, you know, conversations and, 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 and therapy, and we need to talk about these, these, these points, because if we don't talk about it, who is? You know, who is going to talk about this? Like, are we going to have a change? Like, are we going to, you know, come together? Like, is it going to happen, or are we just living in this crazy world where we're all, like, going to go against each other? Like, dude, you can you can have a different religion. You can believe whatever you want, but I'm not going to judge you, dude. I'm not going to put you under the bus. I want to have a conversation. I want to know why you think like that, you mm -hmm. know? And I think it's so important, man, to, 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 view, to view life, you know, with a different lens, you know? Yeah. It's, it's important to grow. It's important to grow and important to learn. Yeah, yeah I agree, man, 100%. Like, um... You know, we all have our, like, different backgrounds. We all have our different things. You could be, like, the same, you know, you could be the same person. You could be, like, ever, born in the same type of household, the same religion, the same food. Same, you still have different opinions, mm -hmm. you know. And mm -hmm. um, I think talking about stuff just, you know, it clears the air and allows people to think and reflect. And everybody should be much more open-minded to other people's situations. You have no idea what someone's going through. No. Ever. Ever, and, and, yeah. and especially the society we're living in, well, especially the place we're living in, uh, they're very close-minded, close-minded people, not open to 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 change or to, to differences. And in, in the long run, man, it's just it's not gonna it's not it's not gonna be a good thing. You have to learn to adapt, man. You have to learn to adapt mm -hmm. and to and to learn that the you know, learn and also teach that there's other ways. You know, I find that very important. And honestly, that's why. That's why I love football. That's why I loved when I used to work with you and the, and the boys. That's why I loved, uh, you know, being a manager of a club. Like, you you come together for the same goal. That's why football is so important, man. You can There, there, can, there, there can be people from, from Compton in the locker room to, you know, a, a doctor from a freaking farm boy in Iowa. You know what I mean? And all with different cultures, all with different backgrounds, but they all come together for one goal, you know? And I view the world like that man that's how I, I view the world and that's how people should view the world like you know you think the guy from compton can really vibe with the guy from iowa not really you know but they come together and they say hey fuck our differences and let's you know come together for a common goal and i think we should learn from that man we should really really learn from that because the best moments i've ever had okay were in situations with people that i have almost nothing in common with mm -hmm. you know 
Yeah, I agree, because it's the moments that you learn the most. Yeah. Like, I, we, we met some weird fucking people, man. Yeah, that's actually, one of the, like, the fun things about where we worked is, um, is that it was, it was always different. And the thing that I every noticed. Every single night. Every single night was so different. And there was so much stuff that happened. And in, like, a typical person's life, let's say you work at, like, a 9 to 5 desk yeah. job. One of our situations would be, like, talked about in this office yeah. for six months and then brought back up six every, years. every New Year's. Oh, yeah. Like, Can you believe that friggin' that Jason went on the table, started screaming, and then took his shirt off and then just, like, shit on the table? Like, you know what I mean? It's like insane things happen every day. But for us, that was and a we, Wednesday night. Yeah, it's a Wednesday, and yeah. we forget about it. Like, yeah. yeah, we forget about it completely. There's so many situations, so, so many. Like crackheads at like six o'clock in the morning yeah. trying to like, I don't know, like like bash their heads on uh, on uh, on a table or whatever. Like it's nuts, man. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, everything, everything. It's a circus. It it's really is a circus. circus yeah. It's nonstop. Like uh, let's say like New Year's. Remember New Year's? This New Year's surprisingly, not that bad. Why? They did, a, they did a ticket system. They did a ticket system. Yeah, so you had to pay like a cover to come in. It was like a hundred and sixty bucks, something Damn. like something crazy like that. It yeah. included a buffet, but who cares? But it was it was nice. Who's eating at a buffet on New Year's Eve? Yeah, no, it wasn't it wasn't crazy. But at the same time, for for us, there was one situation: New Year's. Yeah, you imagine? You know, you kind of want situations on New Year's, dude. Man, I was okay. I was yeah, I okay. was fine. With you're that. getting an old. Yeah. You're you're an old man, man. Oh, yeah, stop it. <laughs> Yeah, just turned 27. Oh, God, man. Yeah, you're old. Yes, you're fine. Okay, you're stopping, my God. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, man, like, New Year's was crazy. I, I liked it. I liked the, the Friday and Saturday nights when it was uh, more hectic. Mm -hmm. I loved it, dude. Mm -hmm. I lived for it, you know what I mean? I really, really liked it. And <laughs> just the, the fights and the... I, I don't miss it. I miss the camaraderie for sure. I miss mm -hmm. the yeah, boys. Yeah, yeah. I miss the boys and the girls. Don't I, I didn't forget about you. Okay, we had the uh, you know we had two uh, women that uh, work with us, uh, Andrea yeah, and uh, Isa. Um, sure. <laughs> Guys, yeah, they're beautiful people. Absolutely awesome, and they went through it a lot with us too. You know, we uh, <laughs> God, we. <laughs> Yeah, like every weekend there was a fight, and we even some nights where there was no handcuffs left. Yeah, that was. Imagine yeah. running out of handcuffs, dude. Yeah, running out like because yeah, there's like five fights at the same time. Yeah. yeah. So like we were uh, just to explain like we used to, we used to work at the casino, okay? But inside the casino there was a nightclub, and the nightclub was uh, was called Alea, and uh, I uh, I was the the manager there for for a short time. But uh, yeah, and how it works is that uh, the casino is a in Quebec is a government establishment, okay? So we're technically government employees. Okay, so we're not like that's why everything is filmed and everything is is, is strict because uh, you can't afford. Well, they can't afford, you know, you looking like a bully or looking like uh, or doing something like overly aggressive because it'll um, infringe the clientele like or scare the clientele pretty much, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they were very strict for that. That's why y y you were saying like no headlocks or whatever. No, uh, no, no, but, headlocks, you know, if, if situations got out of hand, you can still like you, you, you have to react. Like if you're getting punched at, dude, you're going to punch back. Like that's that, that's what it is. But um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> sometimes it got violent though. Sometimes it got violent and Hey, we had to deal with those kind of situations. Like one time I got bit. Remember that? Yeah. 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 Dude. That was crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, guys, I got bit. Okay. You heard that, right? It's not a, you know, it's not a, <laughs> it's not a mistake. I literally got bit. Okay. Uh, so I was in the, uh, the, uh, well, the DJ booth. Okay. And in back of, in, in the back of the DJ, there was, uh, you know, drunk 50 year old Caucasian women though oh yeah uh, 50 maybe 40 i guess 40 ish i guess late or late 30s whatever and um there's like a similarities to all these stories huh? yeah like, uh, caucasian starts yeah, with a c, yeah, starts with a c. asian, asian. Yeah, yeah. um yeah <laughs> so uh it's just disgusting it's man anyway so uh my friend wanted to the guy i was working with wanted to kick her out because she was throwing her uh was throwing um like glasses and stuff at other people in the club so you yeah. know Normally, you get kicked out for that kind of behavior. Not you know supposed I mean? to act like exactly, that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because yeah, yeah. one, you probably have like three kids and you're in your 40s and it's time to go home because it's uh, one o'clock in the fucking morning. Okay. And two glasses hurt. Glasses hurt. hurt. You. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he asked her politely to leave. She looks at him, turns around, and says, fuck you, and slaps him right in the face. So, 
pretty mad. So he grabbed uh, her arm, you know, like you, like you should do. Like, you, you know, if she slaps you in the face, you sh- like in a, in a public setting, like, you know, that's assault. So what we did is, you know, we 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 grabbed her and then we put uh, we put handcuffs on her to to then be handed out to the police because the guy was like bleeding and stuff, right? And while I was putting uh, the handcuffs on this individual, she lunged at my arm and bit me. Okay, she put her canine tooth about oh, half an inch. <laughs> yeah, you in my you arm. were yeah. There was blood. There was um. <laughs> yeah. There was a mark. You could see like every tooth. Yeah, and it she was wasn't, uh, no offense, lady. Well, actually, offense, lady. Fuck you. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. She was gross. She was gross. <laughs> she was <laughs> gross, dude. So, yeah, you were kind of scared of, like, anything. You know, you could yeah. have caught something because you have no idea. I can be fucking the next Magic Johnson, dude. You know what I mean? No thank yeah, you. Yeah, man. You don't got that money, though. You I know what I mean? Like, I don't. Well, you'd I don't. probably be dead in a couple of years. Exactly. Like, that's crazy. Exactly. Magic so, Johnson's just drinking <laughs> cash. You know, he just blends it up. That's the That's the cure. <laughs> Do you really have AIDS if you're rich? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, man, like I had some blood tests and stuff, and uh, yeah, it yeah. was it turned out good. I'm good. All right. Yeah. But still, like it just you got AIDS afterwards. Yeah, afterwards. Yeah, afterwards, yeah. afterwards yeah. It was just when you were uh, pumping that guy. <laughs> <laughs> when I was pumping the guy and sweating on his sweating face. On his that's face. that's where but it you happened. saved his life, you know. So it was all yeah, worth it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, you know, <laughs> that was crazy, man. In the poker room, the guy just dropped. He was like 400 pounds. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, man, he, well, you know, heart attack, 400 pounds, no yeah, shit. Yeah, two and two together, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, watch what you eat, kids, okay? Yeah. Work out for coming fun Coming from two really big guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, but we yeah. watch what we eat, okay? We're yeah. not as, um, you know. No, we're just big. We're not, like, we're not like morbidly obese. You know? Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I was, though. I'm just obese. <laughs> morbidly. <laughs> Capital O, B, E, Capital O, S, E. <laughs> French toast. Oh, Old yeah. Beats. Oh, my God, man. Yeah, it was crazy situations, man. Beautiful people, too. And, like, we met, we met like, a lot of police officers, too. Like, young police officers before yeah, they yeah, went yeah. into the career. Yeah. And honestly, like, some of them, you know, you can tell right away that they're they're going to have a rough time. But mm-hmm. some of them, man, like, I have some great relationship with, uh, relationships with police officers right now. And, man, for, for the people who say that police officers are all assholes... Dude, in every... Some of them are. Some of them are. Absolutely. Like, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah, like, a lot. Yeah. But not all. Mm. And I think that um, what I learned from my job is that it's just a person. It's a it's a dude. It's a girl. It's it's just a, just a fucking person. Because when you end up working with them often, you lose the fear of a cop. Yeah. I feel like when you're growing up, let's say you have a normal job. Mm-hmm. You're growing up your entire life, no matter you're Caucasian, but black, like, okay, you, you know, you're automatically scared. Like, it's it's a scary situation. But if you're even white, like any any type of color, you have this, there's a certain fear behind it. Because that you associate them to tickets. You associate mm-hmm. them to, you know, violence. Something bad. Yeah, to like, they have a gun. They have this. If I do something wrong, I can go to jail. You know, you don't want any of this. Nobody wants no. any of this, right? No. So I think most people growing up, well, at least me. I was, I was scared. Like, I didn't... The first time I got pulled over by a cop, I think I was I was 18. Mm-hmm. And I was on a date with this girl. I really liked her, too. Um, but nothing ever happened, but anyways, whatever. So I, I was on a date with her, and we were like, such a stupid date. We we had, a like, a, a jar of peanut butter, and we had two... She liked peanut butter. Whoa, Just dude. Just chill out. Okay, okay. we had, you had, like, a, the... She brought her dog. Yes, she brought her dog. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We had a jar of peanut butter and like two butter knives and whatever. And then we were just like eating. Pe- I think, I don't know if we had bread. I think we we're just eating peanut butter and just like driving and shit. What? I don't know. I remember the peanut butter was there. We were just like. She you can't w- act like this is normal. I know it's not normal. I'm just saying this is what I remember. Okay. This is my memory of this the situation. Hey. And I'm driving and like the, the sign says, um, I think it was like 90 miles an hour. I was driving like 80 or 75. And. This guy was like up my ass, like behind me. I just saw lights. I'm like, pause. <laughs> Resume. <laughs> <That's not him. laughs> this guy, this guy. <laughs> no, this and this you, car, you, yeah. this car behind me was so like underneath the car almost, you know? Yeah, yeah. Lights like blaring. And I was like, what the hell? So I, I slowed down. Mm-hmm. Sirens go off. I'm panicking. No way. First, like first time I get stopped, I'm I'm like shaking. I have no idea like what to do. I'm like. Oh my God, I'm going to jail. Oh my God, I'm going to get shot. This guy's going to put me in handcuffs. I'm on a date. You know, like, I don't know what's going on. 
cop comes to the window. He's like, hey, your ID, please. And I'm like shaking, you know, just give him my ID, give him my ID. And he's like, where are you going? I was like, um, oh, by the way, I suck at like, I have no idea where I am all the time. I'm horrible. Like I need. Yeah, I, man. How do you not remember my house? Like, come on. I, I don't, no, nothing, nothing. That's I could, I could be like from my home. You guys could tell me someplace like 10 minutes away from my house. I need a GPS. I just need a GPS. It's my brain doesn't register that stuff ever, ever. I don't know streets. So I don't, I know it's very weird. Mm. I don't know streets. I don't know. I use GPS. That's it. I Give me the fucking address. So like it's behind, it's behind this Denny's and then you turn left and you see the big like farm boy guy. And I'm like, just give me the fucking address. Just give me the, I'm not gonna, I have no idea where that is. It's like, oh, but it's like right beside you. Like, I don't know. Just yeah. give me the address. I'll Google it. So what did the cop do, man? Um, the cop stopped me and he's like, uh, he's like, you're going too slow. Then I was like, what? He's like, you're, you're driving way too slow. Did you take anything tonight? I'm like, uh, no. And I have a knife. Like a butter knife with peanut butter in my hand. <laughs> this like, guy's like, been I'm smoking like, the devil's lettuce. No. <laughs> and he's like, like, what are you, where are you going? I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm just like, you know, just driving around. I'm going home. And he's like, your address is that way. I'm like, I'm just driving around. <laughs> I'm like, you oh know, my I'm God. going that way. Yeah. <laughs> and and um, I'm like, I'm just on a date, you know, and whatever. And I'm like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, I'm my hands are, sh I'm shaking. He can see I'm like panicking you know we have a five foot ten arab individual. yeah exactly yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah five foot you know ten and a half foot right? <laughs> I, I said it to on last pod okay yeah, i'm yeah. i'm six foot with a pair of jays on okay yeah, yeah. so that, that's what counts yeah i'm actually six foot four yeah six foot four okay yeah yeah so right, uh, yeah anyways the guy ended up giving my and my, i'm spanish. spanish yeah keep on going you could be spanish hola como estas mi nombre es johnny Okay, that's, you can't, you can't be Spanish yet. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'll try again. <laughs> so, anyways, he ended up giving my ID back, and it was like, okay, have a nice day. And I just, I went up, but I, I remember, like, clearly the fear I had from, mm -hmm. from this cop. Yeah. And nothing happened. He was just like, you're driving too slow, you have to drive faster. I was like, oh, okay. But I was so scared. And then with time, with this, with this job I have, mm -hmm. we have so many interactions with cops, you just realize it's just a guy. Like he's doing his job or whatever. Some of them do take it way too seriously. Some of them are insane. So you good. don't want to mess with them. But like, I think through the job we have, we can detect it. We yes. we know who we're dealing with. Yeah. We know ex we we know personalities. Yeah. And I think that's a really good thing to have in life. If yeah. they come off the bat and they they don't want to have a conversation and you're guilty, you're guilty, you're, you're guilty. You're done, you, yeah. you're done, dude. Yeah, you, yeah. You, there's no there's no <laughs> you know there's no conversation to be had. Like he's not going to give you a chance. It's over. Like he probably had a bad day or he's just an asshole or or he has a power trip. You know, people yeah. have power trips a lot. often. You know yeah. what I mean? Especially you, nowadays. If you got a beard and a big nose, you have to forget about it. <laughs> Joking. And it's Tesla. It is a, a couple Tesla. Teslas. Yeah, no, that guy. And yeah. it smells like Drakkar Noir. Drakkar Noir. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, the funniest thing is the first thing I get asked anytime I'm in like, it's like, like, hey, is this your car? And I'm like, you scan the plates. You should know if it's my car. And you just ask me. No, right? I'm just double checking. You know, just a lot of go. stolen cars. Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. just, uh... <laughs> you just look like the type. You know. You know, just just hey, doing my due diligence. Okay, we want to be, uh, you know, we want to be like different and stuff in 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 2023. But you got to admit, like where we are, like there's still you know racist stereotypes, like for cops. Yeah, no, no, I think, for sure. I think like racist. It depends on the cop there, but like you know, there's generalizations for sure, for sure, dude. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like I realize that, like, um, <laughs> strange. I realize that it might be completely just me right like just mm -hmm. in my head and stuff yeah but i realized that when i was younger if i was driving a shitty car and i had a beard on like i had a full beard automatically i'd get stopped so often like let's say in a month i would get stopped not even exaggerating minimum five times do you five know times a month yeah do you know what the hat trick is hat trick sorry yeah you... so when you're driving like when i was a kid we used to say like okay if you ever see a cop take your hat off if you're wearing a hat yeah. Because a hat automatically, like, they automatically say in their head that you're like, oh, my God, it's a young, you know, a young, uh, I don't know, a young kid, yeah, like, yeah. A, like a badass kid doing something like that, you know, causing mayhem or whatever yeah. when you have, like, a backwards hat or a hat on, whatever. So, like, when you don't have a hat on, you look cleaner in a certain way. So, it's, oh. I know, it could, we, you know, we probably smoked a lot of weed, too, and that's probably <laughs> affected that paranoia, but, you know, it could be, it could be uh, you know, a fact, I think. I mean, I, I could. I, I I don't know. Maybe. No, who knows? The only, the only thing, like, I know like, it's from personal experience. And, like, I realized that, like, when I was driving, a, like, a shittier, like, a beat-down car, 
and I had a full beard, I get stopped all the time, all the time. And I wasn't given breaks. No one was giving me a break, ever. It was always, oh, this is your ticket. Like, have a nice day and like, go fuck yourself. And mm -hmm. I was like, I'm like, yo, man, you just, I just got a ticket like fucking 10 minutes ago. And they said, oh, yeah, no, here's your ticket again. And I was like, okay, whatever. And um, I realized that as soon as I had a, a better car, I was never stopped. And I think that, like, I, I think that what happens is, is that in the head of the cop, if he sees a shitty car, he thinks that person might be like a little bit less educated okay. or like a little bit unable to defend themselves in certain ways. So it's like hmm. an easier target. And I think I, that's how I felt when I was driving hmm. a shittier car, I would get stopped all the time. I give 100% of my ticket and this and that, no matter what. I still had the same attitude. I was still a nice guy, you know, but as soon as I had a better car, I would get stopped so much less. And I was worse. I was a worse driver. Like I was like crazy. And I, when I would get stopped, they would let me go. And always the first question is like, is this your car? I don't, yeah, yeah, it's my car. And then after that, it's like, okay, yeah, well, have a nice day. And I was like, thanks, man. Like, you know, I gave same, same attitude, same energy, same everything. It's just that I had a shitty car before and then I had a, like a, a better car. Like a, I'm not even saying like a Tesla or anything. Like I just had the 2018 and it just looked nicer. It was like black and red interior. Yeah, it was a Camry. It's very clean. But it just looks clean. Yeah. And I don't know why, but I, I realized like 100%, I was getting stopped so much less. Mm -hmm. It was like one time every six months maybe or even a year and I would they would have a nice day go <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah I don't know why <laughs> and the beard thing didn't matter anymore if I had a big beard or a little beard whatever. but it's crazy how like cops like you know nowadays like um well in my opinion they're not trained enough honestly it's like people yeah. people say defund the police defund the police dude that's not the problem man that's not the problem you should mm -hmm. fund the police people don't maybe don't want to hear this but you should fund the police they need training man they're going through this stuff every single day like imagine going through let's say like you're um i don't know you're a navy seal whatever okay it's not even comparable okay but the training is intense the training is very intense and you prepare for a certain time period okay police officers deal with shit like that every day mm -hmm. every single day and they're expected to just absorb the emotion and go to work the next day yeah and for that i salute you dude yeah, and yeah. men and women in the in the in the blue you know what i mean mm -hmm. you, you guys are doing very good man like it's 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 crazy the the amount of sheer willpower and mental fortitude to be able to get up the next day and act like nothing happened after you've seen like a suicide or a shootout or, yeah, or someone crazy. leaves their baby in a ditch yeah. or whatever yeah. you know what i mean and even uh you know like what are your colleagues could uh, could have like they all have mental issues for sure and who else are they going to talk to than other police officers you know what i mean yeah. nobody else yeah. is going to understand their problems man police officers when they have the highest percentage of divorce rate the highest percentage of suicides the highest percentage of stress anxiety depression everything is in that job yeah. and then i have all my friends saying yeah i want to be a cop and i'm like why are you sure no but i'm like why why oh, no. and if it's behind like um a passion thing oh my dad was a cop he was a cop and this is a cop and my brother's friend is a cop and then whatever and it was like um I've wanted to be a cop since I was two years old, and this is all my life is I cop, cop, cop. Okay, cool. It's your passion. You know, I understand that. If it's for a paycheck, get another job. Yeah, yeah. Get for another sure. job. What the hell? For sure. Why would when you have a choice, you're in a democracy. When you have a choice to choose any job you like, why are you taking the worst one? Why are you taking the one with the highest stress, the highest suicide rates, the highest everything? And the pay is not that good. No. It's like okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay pay. I don't get it. Cops and teachers, in my in my opinion, are substantially underpaid teachers are worse than yeah like i know but still like even cops man like it's just phew, yeah. for the amount of work like we were making probably more at the casino than like a, a, a cop yeah. starting out yeah, starting yeah, off no, you know? we, we are yeah. Yeah, yeah surprisingly yeah and we're not the, the fun thing about it is like we're not cops but we're like we're like one uh grade below cops so we have like a lot of rights and a lot of stuff that we can do and um we're protected yeah we're like it's a government protected. establishment right? yeah we're protected so like People come in, and if it's too heavy, we call cops. That's it. Like it's it's really nice, mm -hmm. and we have a really nice pay, and everything is good. Yeah, the cops used to the cops used to ask us for their help sometimes, dude. Remember that? I ask us for help. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. To like, sure. like like you know, put people in, in like like there's one time there's this this dude he was huge man, and he they had so much trouble trying to put him in the cop car. Oh yeah, I and remember like, that. And I was just like, we gave him to him to the to, mm -hmm. to both police officers, and then they were struggling like. 
a lot. Like they were mm-hmm. struggling with this guy. And uh, they just waved at us. They waved at us and we're like, oh, you know what? We'll wait. We'll see what they can do. Mm-hmm. You know, they could do it, right? They're good. And then they're like, no, no, like fucking mm-hmm. come help us, you know? Mm-hmm. And we, we, you know, we, we took care of the situation there. But we did. There's, there's another situation very similar to this. Yeah. It was uh, not a big guy. Okay. A smaller dude. Okay. Um, you know, let's say my height, uh, smaller than me. I'd say he was like 180, mm-hmm. you know, like he's skinny. He's not really that, you know, in, in an okay shape, nothing crazy. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was on heavy, heavy, heavy illegal substances. Like heavy. what? Like I'm, what? You know this one that makes you like, it gives you the strength of 10 men. What's it called? And it takes like, it drains like fluid from your, um, from your spine. It's a very heavy drug. It's I, I, Meth? Meth? No, no, no. It's, it's, um takes fluid from your spine dude yeah it's something like that what i don't know if i saw this in a movie to be honest. um but like the zombie drug what the fuck yeah. is that called what is that called Flaca? bath salt bath, bath salts salt. yes bath salts is it bath salts possibly was he trying to eat their faces he was just strong really he was just very well dude, very, if you're if you're drunk or on on blow or no. whatever like your 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 strength is going to be in, increased right because like we like the, i'll the, tell you i'll the, tell you i'll tell you what happened and you're you're not gonna go ahead. It's not blow. Go ahead. It's not like, you know, Gandu. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He was on the so he, the yeah, this guy. For Gandu, people who don't know, yeah. he's like uh, six he, foot like, seven. He's a great guy. He's like six foot seven. Uh, and about like four hundred pounds. Four fifty maybe. Four fifty yeah. maybe. Like that. Huge guy, man. Giant. Just yeah. like a absolute a fridge of a person. Yeah. Giant. So this guy, my height, skinny guy, on the ground. Okay. Gandu. And other people on top of him. This guy is waving him. My God. He's pushing, doing push-ups almost, waving him off. And he's like, what the f... You know, he's being moved. How? How do you do that? The immovable object. The immovable object. <laughs> then <laughs> Meets an unstoppable force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they try to put him inside the... The cops are trying to put him inside this cage. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a type of van that opens up, and then inside there's like a, a In a Quebec, cage. what you call that... Uh... Back a salad. Back a salad, yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a cage made out of metal. It's like to make sure that like because you're you're extremely violent person, you can't move. So yep. you have to detain you hundred mm-hmm. percent. They couldn't get him inside, and then Gandu, they ask for help. Gandu takes him, throws him down into the metal thing, and just slides him. All of this force needed. It it took so much strength. It took so much force to get this guy to move, and it's just a crazy like. Uh, heavy substance nobody could stop him he was just so strong for maybe like five ten minutes and then threw him inside that thing close the doors done yeah but imagine the cops after they got to take him out after they hopefully they let him in until he calms down they let him they keep him stay they stay stay there until he calms down because that's um yeah i wouldn't want to be a cop that's difficult job man yeah and that happens literally every weekend like Mm -hmm. yeah we used to have we had the fucking creme de la creme of of you know messed up people at the casino but like there's not only the casino, like there's there's other there's other parts of, of the of the city where like there's you know there's a lot of situations going on and stuff and like they have to deal with this nonstop, dude. Mm-hmm. I don't know, it's crazy. It's just like I, I think police officers deserve uh, a lot of recognition, and I would love to have one of them on my show if they want to talk or whatever, man. I would yeah, yeah. I would love to. I would love to, guys. If you're if you're a police officer and you want to come on my show and are ready to answer some questions, I'm probably gonna go a little deep, but mm-hmm. you know there's some boundaries. I'm not gonna go. Too hard. Who did you kill? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> did you exactly. take your gun out? Then? <laughs> it's the first question, right? <laughs> did you kill anybody? Did you ever do? Did you ever shoot it? Yeah. You <laughs> no, man. Be honest. It's, it's, yeah, you're it's, on tape. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. And plus, like one of our uh, one of our friends, like um, like he started working as a as a cop, and then one of his colleagues, uh, you know, killed himself. Like the day the, the the day after he started working. Yeah, yeah, and it was his partner. Yeah, it was his partner. He's the guy training him. Rest in peace, him. by the way. I don't remember your name, man, but yeah, like, yeah. like, thank he, you for your service and you yeah, know, rest in peace. Very, very crazy. sad situation. Yeah, yeah, he was training him. Yeah. And then the next day, he came in for I think his second training. Yeah. And the fact that he's still right. a cop is yeah. mind blowing to me. Yeah, and the the guy that was training him, yeah, suicide. Yeah, I think it was like uh, he shot himself in the face. Like that. In his cop car. In his cop car. In his yeah, cop yeah, car yeah. with his own gun. I think I'm not. Yeah. I'm maybe talking out of my mm-hmm. ass, but I think this no, that was the situation. I'm pretty sure that was the situation too. Yeah. I, I, yeah. Imagine being called to work one morning, man, and like, you know, a person that you, like, let's say me and you, like, we've been together for years, and then one day you show up to work, and then I'm, you know, dead. No, dude, don't even say it. Don't even say it. Don't even say it. That's wild, man. That's wild. It's just crazy. And the fact that, you know, you you sign up again the next day and keep on going and keep on going, like, it's just, 
It's just, it's just crazy because it seems like the the biggest warning sign. You know, the biggest like, don't do this. Yeah. You know, and then, yeah, it's very surprising he's still a cop. It's very surprising that he did it. It's his, it's his passion. You know, he yeah. loves it. He's really good at it. I saw him a couple times, and, and he seems happy. Well, usually people like that are passionate about their job, they're the best at it. Yeah, because they actually care. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just a paycheck. And like you said, to be a police officer, you can't rely on it to be a... Re, you can't rely on your job to be a paycheck. Like, you have to care too much as a police officer. Yeah. And the ones who don't give a shit are probably the ones who, you know, are doing it for the paycheck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, the ones who, like... Sometimes, you know, because you have a certain standard you have to meet for your job, right? Absolutely. So you still have to do your job. Absolutely. No matter what. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the ones who don't who don't give a shit... Like, I don't think they're that bad, to be honest, because as a cop in general, because if you care too much, sometimes you could be really bad. If you don't care enough, it's really bad, too. I think you need like a just like a uh, middle middle ground. But I think if you don't care too much and you're working for a paycheck and whatever, I think you're like a more laid back person in general. So like if you're laid back and you're nonchalant and all this stuff, but like the way you talk to people is like, you know, you're, you're, just, you're like, oh, I'm just doing my job. You know, I'm just doing my job. I think that type of attitude is not a bad thing you to have, have to, as a cop. Yeah, yeah, you have to be a very stoic person. You know, you have to hide oh, your, yeah, hide yeah, your yeah, emotions yeah. very yeah, for well. For sure, for sure. For, for sure. sure. That's wild, man. Yeah. Anyway, brother, it's already been an hour. That's crazy. Man. I yeah, can talk for like five more I hours. I know, man. Hey, I can't wait to have you back. Guys, yeah. uh, please let uh, let them know how they can reach you on your social media. Yeah, my social media is French Toast Crisp on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Yeah, French Toast Crisp. Your baby. businesses? My business, uh, AG Beauty Consulting on IG, yep. or you can go on agbeautyconsulting.com. That's the website. And then Turo, I don't know, send me a message on Instagram and I'll send you the links. There you go. Yeah, Guys, thank you so much for listening. Subscribe, like, tell a friend. And tell a friend to tell a friend. Okay. Yeah. Uh, hit me up on IG with um, with the, like all my posts. Uh, I'm gonna be start. I'm gonna start posting in uh, March. Okay. So you hit me up on IG, uh, talking smack with JB, or uh, by email, and I am. I'll be glad to answer your questions. And if you have, if you're an interesting person and want to come on the pod and talk about life, be my guest. All right, guys. Love you. Take care, and see you later.